Hello fans of financial markets. This is Dr. Duru with a video version of the market breadth. I'm on day five and a half and counting of my web hosting company, Deluxe Hosting, screwing around with the servers and screwing around with my website. So I am posting updates by video until I can get this resolved. And then of course, I'm gonna have to find a new web hosting, but that's not your problem, that's mine. Let's move on to where the market is. We're at a critical, perhaps important juncture. Um, I flipped bearish earlier this month, um, or actually late, I think it was late September, and it turned out to be very timely, but the important follow through has not occurred to keep the market in the bearish mode. The lots of negative headlines have been thrown at this market and it has withered the storm actually pretty well. So what I was looking for here, well, well the clue here for the initial bearish call was this downtrend that was confirmed by the lower low. And as I stated in one of my earlier posts, the S&P 500 had not made a lower low since the stock market collapse last year, uh, March, uh, April, 2020. So this was an important turning point. But now you see here after the market gapped up and recall for those of you who are readers of the blog, I said this is a fade the rally kind of market. So this was a great spot to fade the rally. The intraday high came just short of 50 day moving average resistance, which is the red line here. And then the sellers took over. Now the sellers stopped short though, after they filled this gap, they stopped short of getting more follow through, which would have been to break this low. And in fact, buyers, you could see very clearly here at this point, buyers took over. They stepped in at the intraday low and kept pushing the candle back up. And today we've got a 1.7% jump. So the sellers still have a shred of hope. And I do call it a shred because the S&P 500 magically closed right at the 50 day moving average resistance and it will take a uh you know a a selling pressure a, a, a bout of selling pressure that is pretty strong to prevent this index from breaking out because even as bearish as we want to be given this chop and churn we have to remember all of the buying force that's been applied to this market you just can't ignore that and all the seasonal factors at play as well that I have written about plenty. So that's the setup for the S&P 500. I'm going to take you through just a few more charts to demonstrate how it might be that the bearish moment is already coming to an end. So let's take a look now at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ has a little bit ways to go, but it too had a very strong day, a 1.7% gain like the S&P 500. It has it stopped short of the 50 day moving average resistance, but you can see that it closed also on its highs, a very bullish move. And like the S&P 500, it is now above the 20 day moving average downtrend line, which is this dotted line. Now, the uh, we can't get much of a signal from the small caps. This is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF because it is just stuck in this endless trading range but do take due note of the way that the 200 day moving average served as a pivot during this period of softness in the general market that could be important to reference later on if the index happens to finally break out above this trading range so i am watching this most closely of probably any other index I don't often look at it, but let's take a look at the financials. The financials um, have been performing better. As you can see, uh, the 50 day moving average has held up as support through what was a bearish moment for the rest of the market. So that's pretty interesting. And since I'm on the financials, let's quickly go to bonds and you'll see TLT, which is the ETF for the 20 year treasury bond has suddenly been rallying, which means yields are going down. Totally bizarre. Um, well, I shouldn't say totally bizarre. The market is what the market is. But you can see here that, you know, there was all this fear or whatever kind of momentum driving higher rates and it just stopped on a dime. And now suddenly 
rates are weakening and so everyone is partying and happy because of course that supports asset prices. Now I faded the move after the breakout of the 200 day moving average, which is this blue line. Technically that's not the correct move, but I have quote unquote fundamental reasons why I wanna bet on a fade here. It could be completely wrong, but it's just, um, I just can't imagine rates going much lower given the Fed is about to taper and tighten monetary policy even by the smallest amount. Okay, let's get back to the stock charts or equity charts. Here's the VIX. Here's another sign that the sellers have completely given up, have likely completely given up. Uh, I, in a previous chart, had shown a, a bottoming here that was kind of a bowl pattern. Today's 9.6% plunge in the VIX broke through that bowl. And now the VIX looks like it wants to retest recent lows. So until that happens, we're probably not going to see a return to upward pressure. And in fact, maybe the VIX is just now done for the season. As, as readers will recall, starting in November, uh, certainly, uh, sorry, starting in uh, late October, certainly by November, is, a, is the start of the seasonally strong period for the markets. And making a bearish case gets harder and harder if the bearish momentum isn't already in place going into that period. And now here's the VIX completely collapsing and pretty much putting, almost putting a nail in the coffin of the sellers and the bears. All right, so let's move on to one of the strongest pieces of evidence. And I wish my site hadn't been down so long. I would have posted this earlier, but uh, recall that I have written a post about the importance of following the currency markets if you're a trader. And the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen is just a very reliable indicator of overall market sentiment. Sure, these are currencies that are outside the US, but they are also currencies that a lot of sophisticated traders and hedge funds will use to fund the purchase of assets. So in this case, a strong Australian dollar means risk appetites are, are, are strengthening and a weakening Japanese yen means that risk appetites are strengthening. You put the two together and you get a very strong signal. And you can see here that the Australian dollar versus the Japanese yen broke out strong over here. This was a 1.5% um, one day move on, what was this, October 11th. So at the beginning of this week. That was the signal that the bearish momentum could be coming to an end. I remain bearish because of just, I wanna to stick to the 50 day moving average as my pivot. But this was the early signal that says, uh-oh, can't get aggressively bearish. So here you go. This currency pair has been strong all week and it's still going. Now, of course, if you're astute, you're looking at this and saying, well, this top, this, you know, whatever you want to call it, double, triple top pattern here could serve as very stiff resistance. So I will be watching closely to see how this pair behaves once it reaches this level of resistance. That might be another signal. Uh, we'll see when we get there. So for now, and I let me just go back to the S&P 500 really quickly to review. For now, what I'm thinking is that uh, my bearish call will end on a 50-day moving average breakout, and I'll go to neutral. I won't go to bullish because I still think that even with the seasonal factors coming, I still think that the index needs to reestablish this longer-term bullish uptrend before I can even think about being bullish. And I was really hoping to wait to get, get bullish again until after the market hit to oversold levels. So let's wrap this up with the market breadth indicators. This is what I call AT50, or uh, the percent of stocks that are above their 50-day moving averages. I put this into, I took out log form, so this uh, chart will look uh, more, uh, more uniform. And you can see here, um, I can draw this very quickly. Let's see if I could draw this very quickly. Uh, the downtrend is potentially coming to another end here. So I'm going to do a very sloppy one here, so apologies. But the pre the downtrend, oh, look at that. Actually, we are right at breakup, breakout territory. Gosh, I really wish I could write about this. 
Um, the line's a little sloppy, but you can see that it looks like the percent of stocks trading above their 50-day moving average is broken above this downtrend. That's another signal that the bearish cycle is likely coming to an end. And of course, this peak here in September can serve as new resistance and a new downtrend could occur. But if you look at the lows down here, we are now establishing a somewhat pattern, a somewhat rising pattern of higher lows. So again, can't emphasize this enough. The, the period of being very bearish is certainly over and perhaps a period of being bearish at all may be coming to an end as soon as tomorrow and maybe uh, in the middle of earnings week next week. And readers will recall, I was expecting earnings week to really catalyze the final uh, flush in the market, however deep it was going to be. But, you know, it is what it is, and we have to stay true to the technicals and the signals. So let's end this with the percent of stocks above their 200-day moving average. You'll see a similarly uh, encouraging line. Actually, it's not similar, but you'll see an encouraging uh, cha potential change of momentum, which is this dashed line was pretty much guiding this longer term market breadth indicator downwards. And what you see now is the uh, this market, uh, sorry, AT200, the percent of stocks trading above their 200 day moving averages is now well above that downtrend line is and is ready to attack the red downtrend line uh, for the first time since the summer. So let's see what happens here. But again, this is an early signal that the bearish uh, times may be coming to an end already for the market. So I will title this, could this be the end of the bearish cycle or something like that? Um, and follow that up hopefully soon with a blog post where I can go into more details. In the meantime, be careful out there. Pay attention to the signals, and I will catch you the next time. Thank you for checking in. And if you want to subscribe to my blog site when it's up again, you can find it at drduru.com slash 122, all letters. Have a good one.